Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jambox. We're here, we're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And with that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Organic herbs and botanicals, skin care and edibles, wellness for body and mind. The Brothers Apothecary. Fine teas and remedies. Ronald Records. From indie gems to classic hits, discover the heart of local music. With live shows all the time, up close and personal, and regular releases on their in house label. Ronald Records. Supporting the community, one track at a time. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Again, shout out the Brothers Apothecary. Ronald Records, and Portland Water. Thanks for keeping us hydrated. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. It's Pricey. Hello. Hello there, my friend. How you so doing? So much for joining us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Give us that, like, Tinder profile of your involvement. Oh, with damn. Uh, yeah, Pricey. Uh, coming out of Portland, Oregon, Northeast Portland, ID to be exact, Irvington District. Uh, I'm a man of many hats, but all those hats all fit under a, a umbrella we we know as Castle Ill. Um, pretty much just multimedia art, but uh, pretty much everybody knows me for the music at this time right now. I'm doing a lot of, I've been putting out, I got six projects I've been putting out since 2000. 22 mm -hmm. and uh um i can't i don't know how many videos we shot but we shot at least maybe seven videos i think uh directing videos and producing so oh yeah uh yeah, yeah. well we'll definitely dig into uh, more of your current projects in the middle here but let's mm -hmm. go ahead and start right at the beginning what got you started in music initially in general oh man it's just always been there always been doing music um wow man um, when I was five or four, I think, uh, I, my dad had me playing guitar. So I was playing guitar and then uh, we lived in California and, um, we moved, uh, when I was like maybe five and we moved, we left my guitar. Right. Oh no. I was on my mom about this for so many years. Like she, she gonna feel bad if I talk about it right now. But, uh, when we moved here, we left my guitar. So we left my guitar. I remember I was begging her for a couple of years and then, um, hip hop kind of blew up at this time. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it blew up, I didn't want to play guitar anymore. I wanted to do some hip hop things. You know, I wanted to rap and all that. So, uh, I made my first rap in like fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, um, I did all like in middle school, I was doing talent shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've been rapping just for, even when it wasn't serious, I was rapping. And then when I got in high school, I, I ran into some, some, uh, local legends around here, like, uh, Jumbo, Jumbo, if you know, Jumbo from Lifesavers. Mm -hmm. And he started giving me my first beats and stuff. And then we recorded our first project when I was like a senior and, uh, you know, the rest is history, but yeah, I've always been kind of known as a rapper or performing and doing stuff like that. Oh yeah. And I guess, you know, just to touch on it, when did you get into some of the other medias that you do? Um, I was on yearbook my senior year in high school, so. Okay. Cameras right there, mm -hmm. picture photography. Uh, my friend uh, Leif, shout out Leif, when we was in, I think, middle school, he had a big old uh, camcorder that he used to let me borrow, and we like, make movies with it and stuff. So I was always into that, and then I was trying to go to if i had finished school i was going to go to nyu tisch school of arts film school if i just made it to my last two years mm. uh, on a spike lee film scholarship so i wanted i would been wanting to make films and stuff like that for the longest time uh producing i just started doing that uh man i just started making beats in like 2021 okay uh shout out to my boy tope he kind of influenced me but um i've always been a beat digger 
Yeah. If you guys know the crate digging, crate digging mm -hmm. and all that, um, shout out Star Child, my man, R.I.P. But we used to skip school and go down to Second Avenue and like get records and like I've always so even before I knew how to make beats, I would bring my my um if you're making the beat for me, you're producing it. I'd bring you the record and stuff already and be like, well, this is the part I want. And oh, okay, so yeah, so you kind of, yeah, you already yeah, had like yeah, a roadmap yeah, yeah, in your head. Yeah, 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 like, it was more technical back then. Like, it seemed like more difficult, like, my production style is kind of primitive, mm. you know what I'm saying? But it's it's effective for what I'm trying to do. But uh, I didn't understand that I, how I can do that. So I used to have little issues back in the day about like, I'd bring somebody the beat or whatever, and then they would make it, but like... Yeah, but it wasn't exactly like... It's lost yeah. in translation. That frustrated me for years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, but, you know, I think there's I think there's a fine line between simplistic and primitive. You know what I mean? Like, I think sometimes th th there can be an efficientness that yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a little bit smoother in general. Yeah. No, it can work. Like, yeah. it definitely, thank the, thank the Lord, it works for me. But, you know, at the same time, um, I don't want to never take away from, like, some of my buddies or... You know, people I know who are like no, the lock producers, yeah. you know, and they got technical down. They know to sit there and let the kick 37 years on the kick and do all that. Like, you know, I got to give those guys their props. Oh, no, how, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. No, trust me. If, <laughs> if people who do video editing ever saw. The yeah, video yeah, video, yeah, yeah. They would feel exactly the same way. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess the word yeah, I like yeah, to yeah. use. Went to the Berkeley School of Editing, you know. Oh, damn. Well, I'm never going to let you watch my video editing process. Then. You will be like, why? Uh, but it isn't about me. It's about you. And let's get back into it. I have a All couple right. foundation questions I like to check in with everybody on. Okay. And this first one, it's one we ask early. It's one we ask often. And it's definitely a crowd favorite. Mm -hmm. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Hmm. It's got to be something Prince. Like Prince is my favorite artist of all time. Mm -hmm. So... Damn, man. Probably Purple Rain, something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a quality album. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then what was one of the first live shows you ever went to? That was like specifically Ooh. one you wanted to go to. So like you Ooh. saw what was happening, got tickets. Ooh, went to it. listen, it's going to age me, but listen. Uh, <laughs> um, Run DMC, Beastie Boys Together Forever Tour. Oh, yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. My Uncle Kenny took me. Damn, that's a, that's a powerful moment in music yeah, for yeah, sure. It was crazy. Hell yeah. And, and they thought like there was going to be a... um. Because they had maybe a couple dates before that. I want to say it was like in Oakland or something, that same tour. Mm -hmm. They had some riots and shit. So they thought it was going to be uh, in Portland. They thought it was going to be a big old thing. So like I remember just being little and my Uncle Kenny took me. And um, I remember there being like police on the horses and just this big old thing. But it was peaceful. It was a great night. You know, yeah. great concert. Damn, I, I, yeah, sure. I can't even begin to imagine yeah, what that would have been like. Yeah, That's really dope. powerful. It was dope. Um, and then before we get into more of what you're doing in the present day, mm -hmm. do you have a defining moment where you decided you wanted to take music more seriously? Uh, uh, like I said, when I was in when I was in high school, um, I got my first beats probably when I was 16 mm -hmm. from Jumbo. And... Um, um, I would say probably when I was a senior, uh, we did the project, this project called Bomb Threat, which had the Lifesavers, uh, Versatile, all those guys on there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd probably say after that, I took it serious. But I've always been kind of cursed with like the, um, like, as far as rap, I'm so like a child of hip hop or whatever. Uh, it comes, it's, I, I never really had to work too hard at it, you know? Yeah. Like, even now, like, um, it's just the right beat. It'll come like start coming from the sky for me, you know, mm -hmm. and I just have to be there and listen and pay attention and take the take the stuff in. And, and, and so but I get like I be channeling when I rap, you know, that's all it is. So I never at, in the beginning, I never was like a studio, like a gym rat, studio rat guy or spend all them hours. Like I just kind of get my parts done and get out of there. Mm -hmm. um, so. Like, even though I was taking it seriously, like I've never really taken it more seriously than I've been doing in the last three years yeah you know? like this is me taking it the most serious i've ever taken it other than that i was always kind of just uh just channeling and just gotcha. catching the holy ghost in there so you would know? you say like when you got into the production side of things that was really like kind of the, the light switch moment where you're like th now it's time to lean in no nah, because my first project was produced by somebody else produced by tote but um what what me making my own beats did do it created the space for me to uh, be able to make so much product mm -hmm. now. And for me to really, really 
um, solidify my own sound. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. So it just it just made it easier if I had to sit around and wait because back in the day we would have issues with like my biggest issues I would ever having to do was like waiting for other people mm-hmm. or like um, say like the producer thing we were talking about. I want to make a beat in my mind and then I'll bring it to you and it'll somehow a little bit will get lost in translation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, photographers, man, they should charge arm and a leg, you know, video guys charge yep. arm and a leg, you know what I'm saying? So now when all, all this stuff that we have now, that's all at, like kind of your own disposal, mm-hmm. like leave it all up to me. I'm going to get the job done. You know what I'm saying? And I'll get it, I'll get it done to the, like when my vision mm-hmm. presents itself in my head, this is the, the best part about it all. Like my vision will present itself and then it'll come to fruition. Like I'll really like make, it came from my head, just, a, just started as a thought and then man, we did it. And then that's a lot of the stuff that um, I'll do now. The videos will come out and stuff like that. I'll have a plan and um, this is the way I wanted to see it come out. And then like, there'll be two or three things that will always happen to let, let me know like this, man, we didn't even plan on this. This was like God doing this, you know? Yeah. Just let me know I'm on the right, just kind of let me know I'm on the right path. So uh, yeah, I would just say maybe me making my own beats just made it just it kind of opened the floodgates for me to be able to be productive and now I don't have to rely on somebody to do that and do that now it's all on me you leave yeah. it up to me I'm gonna get it done yeah. oh yeah no I dig mm-hmm. that uh, but now let's go ahead and let's get on into you in the present day but we're gonna get a super easy one out of the way mm-hmm. how'd you pick the name Pricey uh, it's a little something I picked up in the streets but uh, I didn't necessarily i didn't name myself somebody else named me that i mm-hmm. uh, an uncle of mine but yeah nah um it's a little something i picked up you know i used to be known as bleak back in the day and um uh at the same time i was coming out there's a guy named memphis bleak that came out with jay-z and all that and mm-hmm. so uh, i just had to change my name i couldn't be the same guy or whatever Fair. you know what i'm saying so it well, uh, doesn't feel very fitting of what your music sounds like now Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But but once again, I've been through I've been through a few phases. When you st- when I first started making music, and I'm sure this is for anybody, when you first start making music, I I feel like you're all your influences. You know, mm-hmm. you don't have your own style. Yeah. Right. So um, now, even though it came early for me, um, when I very first started, I sound way different than when I sound now. But it just because I had like certain influences in my in my rap, mm-hmm. and then I would kind of. Never biting, but I would like take this little piece from somebody I like, this little piece from somebody I like. Yeah. And then once I finally got it down, like maybe when I turned about 20, 21, I kind of realized I had my own sound. And then once I had my own sound, uh, it just simplified everything. Now I don't, I don't even have to listen to another rap song ever in my life to, to, to go now. I know exactly which way to go mm-hmm. musically wise. And it's yeah. like the most liberating thing ever, you know? You're getting your own sound. I think there's a fine line between influence and imitation. And it sounds like you, you, you've stayed on the right side of that line. Cause in the yeah. beginning of, like you said, nobody has their own exactly. anything. Like you have exactly. to, you have to take examples from what you hear and figure out what you like from it, what you don't. And then mm-hmm. piece together those little bits until you have done it so much that you've created your own thing. No, exactly. And, um, I'm from that era of no biting allowed. Mm-hmm. You know? So biting is definitely a no, no around here. Now, anybody that I'm influenced by, like uh, I do, like I said, I told you I got Prince, uh, many hip hop guys that I look up to and stuff, and I take little pieces and stuff from. But with me, I'm a, I'm a big uh, I'm a big uh, cite your sources guy, mm-hmm. right? So I do a lot of homage type stuff in my. I got yeah. a lot of homage and stuff to Prince's, and even on my last album, kind of like we did a lightweight lightweight homage to Prince on my cover, but. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like to just cite my sources. I'm yeah. influenced by a lot of people, but I would never bite. You know, so I'm just from that. Yeah. No biting allowed. You know I mean, it, it's been a minute since I've heard the term biting. Right. But I, I, know, I, know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. <laughs> Damn, it's been that long because, of, you know, it's not even, it's not even, I guess it's allowed now. No, nah, nah, I mean, you know, it, there's gray areas on that. Yeah. But now let's go ahead and let's talk about your writing process. Okay. And we're going to break it up into chunks, but we're going to start right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So when you get inspired, you're ready to make music. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things you do to get a track started um okay it starts with the beat right mm-hmm. so um i'm a sample guy so uh usually i'll um i'll be looking for i'll be looking for the the, the right song to make the beat and then when i make when i find the beat mm-hmm. the beat is gonna force you this is how i know it's the right song i'll hear a song i'll hear the beat whatever and i'll make it and i'll be like i want to be the first one to 
to write over that beat. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go look and check and make sure nobody else has used the sample before. Once again, no biting. Yep. So man, I'll, uh, or just to be just to be original, you know. So then, um, and once uh, once I find that part, it's a go. Uh, um, the beat will usually, like I said, it forces me. Like the 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 raps start coming from the sky. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't rap for eight years, and I straight turned my ears off to that, and just wouldn't listen, which is kind of like disrespectful to to your gifts or whatever. But now it's like it's almost like a like a, a, a just voices in my head. So the beat will come off, boom! All the raps will start coming, and I want to be the first person if I find a beat. I want to be the first guy to rap on that beat. I want to be the first guy to make that that thing. So um, it's it's almost like when I sit down to make it, when I sit down or people send me beats and stuff. I want to be be sitting somewhere I can if I need to write the song I'll do it because yeah. I don't I don't want to be like it's, it's a thing I might be there for 30 minutes I might be there for like three hours you know mm-hmm. but I can't leave I'm trapped I'm a slave to it now I got to get it I got to get it out so that's how it works pretty much it starts with the beat then um you know usually I usually make my stuff at night so nobody will disturb me you know so because that's another bad thing if I'm like in the middle of the joint I wouldn't want to have to get up and leave or be answering yeah you don't want to have to like go to work after or do whatever yeah. you want to be in the zone I don't have time man so uh if the beat comes boom I'm a slave to the rhythm I gotta write that so usually I'll write the, I'll make the beat boom right there making the beats like I said it's kind of primitive it don't take me that long to make the beats and then right after that I'll immediately write the rap and then I'll be feeling good about myself and make another one and then you know sometimes we do one sometimes we do like three a night whatever sometimes we on a roll you know Oh yeah, no, I dig that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once you get a track finished writing, now do you do you mostly freestyle? Do you do pen to paper? At, no, like, I'm a pure, I'm a writer, man. Like I don't get it twisted. I can, you know, I can catch the Holy Ghost every now and then, yeah. do something, but I'm by no means like I got friends that they think four or five rhyme lines ahead, and they're the freestyle champions of the world. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like I'll have a horrible freestyle night, but sometimes <laughs> I catch, I get in the zone sometimes. You know, yep. So, but now I'm, I'm a writer for sure. Okay, hell yeah. So I, I'm, I'll write and then. I think I do. I think I come up with the name. I kind of come up with the name first. That helps. I kind of come up with the name of the song, and then it'll take you. The beat will tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then once you get a, fa- a track finished, like writing, it doesn't have to be like released, but like once you've gotten it to where it's like you're ready to start like memorizing it and all that. Mm-hmm. How long does it usually take you to get to the point where you feel comfortable enough to perform it? Um, uh, it wouldn't take long, but it would just take like, um. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to like go over it a couple of times. Kind of like when you make a song, this is, this is the funniest thing about making songs and writing them and recording them. Mm-hmm. You'll make them and then you'll realize there may be like one little word or two little words I could have said a different way. It's like mm-hmm. one, one thing and then, and then that's the best part about being able to go over it before you release it. Like you'll make an album, I'll put like, you know, 10, 11 songs, 12 songs together, whatever. And then in that course of me making the album, it took maybe three months or whatever. That very first song or that second song that I made, it'll be bothering me the whole time. It's like, there's one little line I want to change. There's two little lines I want to change. So yep. at the very end, I'll go over everything. And then any one little line, whatever that, I'll switch it up then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. And I mean, you, you honestly, you have a, you have a pretty fair amount of workout for, for the time. Like I was going out shooting mm-hmm. music on Spotify and it does, it goes back all the way to 2022. Yep. Uh, and you put out six albums Yes. and they're not, they're not small albums. Like yeah. you got, you got full lengths of work, which exactly. I, I appreciate. Like I said, I, I think I said this off camera, I'm an album person. Like I love bodies of work. I love, you know, when things tell a story, when you get mm-hmm. a start in a middle and an end Yep. and your sound definitely like. I'm a fan. Like I, I think it's really cool. It's very like you, it's bro. classic. It's funky, mm-hmm. but it's still it's fresh. You know, it Thank hits. You. Like the synths don't feel dated. Mm-hmm. Your flow is really like locked in, and it mm-hmm. just it feels like like while your flow is a little more like staccato, it's very it's very smooth. It's very mm-hmm. calculated, and even on your most uh, recent album, Stomp Down P. Mm-hmm. Uh, no exception to that rule. I think it's some of your tightest work yet. Because I was checking out, yeah. I checked out all your albums, mm-hmm. and like that one really hits home for me yeah. and I, I do this bit where I pick out a track that I really liked mm-hmm. and it was hard it was really hard because I mean like I wanted to go with things like you know a whole lot of off a of posse in effect mm. or my bad or uh, Stevie off of my bad mm. but I had to go with something off the new album Choices, brother. and I went with money talks because I mean just it's the whole package like, obviously that. You were just locked in. You were doing mm-hmm. your thing. Mm-hmm. But that synth bass was nasty. Mm-hmm. And those little keys runs. Yeah, and wait. the guitar lick. And then, that, and then the hook with the sax. It just... Tell them. It, Talk about Everything it. about it was just perfect. Yeah. As a mm-hmm. track goes. Like, I really enjoyed it. But I am curious to know, what are some of your favorite tracks to perform? 
<clears throat> uh, well, first of all, thank you for that yeah. glowing review, brother. And oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I think I think the thing about you is because you used to play in a funk band. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Most of all, Among other things, yeah. And so anybody that's you know, this I know for a fact. Like when I hear some funky stuff, like it touches me deep down mm -hmm. inside. You know what I mean? And uh, you're just a true funk soldier. So I, I see that you appreciate the, you, you, the ones you calling out. I can tell you're a really funky guy. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's dope. Um, the ones I like to perform most. Um, airplane mode, um, um, leather guts, um, uh, ooh, sir knows. Oh, I almost, uh, I, almost uh, that. That yeah, yeah. I got a lot sure. of them, man. Like I love all my music. See, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, when I make these albums, like I said, these, the beats force you to write, right? So like, there's tons of stuff that there's tons of stuff that don't make the project. Like yeah. when I'm done, like doing this, this this plan I have to drop these projects because I'm dropping a few more projects this year. Mm -hmm. But when I'm done with that, like I'm gonna come back next year and drop a, a an unreleased. Cause oh, I, okay. Every so project, like, like the B sides. Yeah, and every like that, project yeah. has a bunch of unreleased stuff that doesn't make it. There's some pretty good stuff in there, but it just don't fit the 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 the. the like you said, you love projects. Me mm -hmm. too. I love these are art pieces. This is like a they. Everything has a theme to it. Yeah, there's I a rhyme and a reason. Myself, I consider myself like a like a kind of like an iceberg slim you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying i want to tell stories i want yeah. to kick street tales you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and i want this to be able to um i don't know if you're familiar with uh um uh, um hustlers convention mm -hmm. okay so that's what kind of when i when it came back i wanted to come back and do something kind of like that yeah so even though i'm not going into depth in that and i'm doing more first person stuff that's kind of what i do you know what i mean yeah so um so yeah, these are projects, man. I want them to just uh, um, everything has to kind of tie together, and like I want to, I want to wind you up. I like I had take pride in like how I intro my albums, and I like mm -hmm. closing them strong. And this is all important to me. And yeah. everything has to make you know everything has to make sense. And I want there to be some different stuff in there. I want there to be a. I usually take like a very known sample. Mm -hmm. and I do a bunch of unknown stuff, you know, in there. I thought I kind of have a little. I kind of have a, a bunch of little small signature stuff that I do. That'll keep me, you know, unique, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I dig that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but now I want to take a moment and I want to step back. Let's look at music kind of as a whole. Okay. What are some of the things about either like newer sounds in general, or at least music that's newer to you mm -hmm. that you find like inspiration from, or you just enjoy? Man, I know we kind of touched on in the beginning, but just like kind of in general, being that I love. Uh, I love music, bro. Music is such a spiritual, it's a spiritual thing with me, you know? And it gets me through the day, driving, scenario. Like, I want, I like the music to match the scenario wherever I'm at and all that. So, uh, as long as it's, as long as it touches me, um, it makes me feel, I, I feel good about that. So, like, um, any, as far as new music that's coming out or, like, the younger cats or anything like that, like, it just gives me a sense of, like, I'm just happy that people are still making dope stuff, you know? I'm just happy that it's still, like, like I said, they're never going to stop making geniuses, man. Yeah, no. So, you know, um, it just makes me feel good when I hear some shit that moves me nowadays. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to uh, ever, I don't wanna, I want ever to stop uh, being slaps out there. So, hell yeah. You know, yeah, man. Well, actually, I think that, that answer is going to kind of cover this next question pretty, yeah. pretty full on, but we'll dig into it one more time. Uh, this next one, it's probably the densest question we have in the interview. But, you know, we've talked a lot about your experiences, the actions, the reactions. But when it's just you and the music, one on one, mm -hmm. what does it give back to you? Okay, uh, that's probably a two part answer, but like, uh, like, as far as personal experiences that I put into my music, like, it's I'm part storyteller and I blend little pieces and stuff of like either stuff I've seen or stuff I've been through, right? So, mm -hmm. the stuff that I've been through, like, uh, you know, music is kind of therapeutic to people, so like. Um, if I write a song, like, let's just say, let's say for, let's just take an example. Like, let's say like, a, a, a I was in a relationship or a breakup or some crazy, something like that. Right. Boom. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I can, let's say I was, let's say I was the guy that was done wrong. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Let's say that was the case or, you know, whatever. And I'm feeling bad about this. Now I can, in real life go act crazy or be sad or be depressed about it. But some, something about just writing a song about that and writing the song and, and getting out your, the how you feel about it. Um, 
it, it allows you to move on and you just feel you feel better about it you know yeah. and any little nutty thought so uh you would you would have is just gone you know and you're move, you're ready to get on to the next thing mm -hmm. making these projects um i don't know how you feel about like if you agree with me but like finishing projects like when you put yourself into them it can be draining right Very much so and when you're done like uh, making a whole project or just even making a good song like uh i'd be drained man like um when i first started um i would just because i'm working on working on like two two projects at a time mm -hmm. stuff but like recently these last couple ones when i'm done i kind of got to take like a 30 day I'll take a thirty day, don't do nothing, and then yeah. recharge after I make these projects because they be they they take they took parts of your spirit with you, you know. Yeah, no, and I think that's I mean that's mm -hmm. important. Like any mm -hmm. any creative process requires recharge time. Yeah, and I don't think that's something that's talked about enough. Like we mm -hmm. get this guy, so like I'm putting out a new song every Friday, and you're like, why? Yeah, yeah like, exactly. What are you? What are we gaining from this? So I mean, not exactly. not to say they're wrong. Like if you if you could do it. More power to you. But I think, especially for, you know, the amount of work that you put out at one time and, like, the focus you put on the details, it, you know, from track to track to track, I think mm -hmm. that, that requires a little bit of, like, decompression. No doubt. But also just, I think your experience with music is, is really powerful. I, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Um, but now let's go ahead and we're going to move on to some hypothetical questions. And for these, sky's the limits. The questions are made up, so the answers are allowed to be as well. But this first one's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. If you could work with any one person, the only requirement is they have to be alive. Mm -hmm. Who would you want to work with, and how would you want to work with Easy. Them? Everybody, listen. Everybody know I love Shaka Khan. Mm -hmm. so, man, if I get Shaka Khan, anything, a hook, uh, you know, a hug me in the studio, whatever, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on down. Like, I love Shaka Khan, so I want to do something with her. Hell yeah. Sure. Hell yeah. No, that's, that's, yeah. That's I love her voice. Her voice just be lifting me out. My, when she hit them notes, like certain notes that she hit, it's like three female singers. Her, the, um, I forgot the lady's name from the emotions. Oof. And you know, the worst with names, but yeah, I know who you're talking man, about. Man, stay hit. Certain notes they hit, like they can lift me out your body. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Shaka Khan, man. And yeah. I just think we'd make a slap. Oh, you know? for sure. That is, we make a slap together. That is not a surprising <laughs> answer based off of your music, but a really good one. Um, and then subsequently, yeah. who's a local artist that you're aware of that you haven't gotten to connect with yet, but you would like to? Uh, that I haven't got to connect with yet. Mm, let me see. Because uh, so many talented cats around here, man. Damn. Uh, and I love them all. Um, I think maybe uh, maybe Hef. Maybe Hef or uh, maybe like JC Cordet. I like him too. Oh, yeah. One of them cats, probably. Yeah. I work with everybody, man. Like everybody oh. I loved, like the first time around, I got him on the first Posse album. Mm -hmm. you know? Like when I first came back, I was like, I didn't know all those cats. I just was like, there's cats that I heard was, yeah. was dope. And there's cats that I kind of like, okay, uh, you know, I like his style. He need to bring your lunch pill. Like I, uh, anybody that comes from that school of, uh, I, I need to bring my lunch pill when I get in the booth with these guys. Like they, they, they're not. Wasting no rhymes, crossing all the T's and down their eyes. I got them mm -hmm. on the first album. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, no, you definitely had a ton of features. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. yeah. yeah so we try to bring it. Well, I've, I've, I've worked with a lot of people, but maybe one of those cats. Maybe one of those cats. Yeah. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then for this next one, like I said before, sky's the limits, and it's pretty literal in this sense. But if you could perform anywhere in the world, and you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access or building stability or power, it's guaranteed the best lineup, guaranteed the best show, and it doesn't have to be a venue. It could be anywhere. Where would you want to perform? Uh, I don't know. Um, I guess Madison Square Garden. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, honestly, that's, that's kind of a running bit. That's where I want to do the show one day. So oh, okay. I, 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 can dig with, I can dig that for sure. That's definitely a quality spot. Mm -hmm. um, and then to wrap up the hypothetical questions, mm -hmm. if you could get one more album from anybody, they could be alive, they could be dead, they could have not put out an album in 100 years, they could have put out an album yesterday. Who would you want an album from? Oh, uh, Mac Dre. Hell yeah. Mac Dre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mac Dre, probably. You know, that is not an answer I get enough, but that yeah, is definitely, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm right there with you. I, I grew up in the Bay, that's, so that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of my stomping grass. I, I appreciate that for sure. Yeah, Mac Dre for sure, man. I knew he had some more tricks up his sleeves. Oh, very much so. The world with definitely. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. I would love to see where, like, I would love to, I would love to see where he got to 
today. You know what I mean? Like that that story would have been incredible. He was a needle pusher, man. So mm-hmm. he'd been doing some different type stuff. He would have been oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying for sure. he would have, and I think I think he really would have influenced a lot of mm-hmm. the movement of the sound. Mm-hmm. He was just he was so prolific in his approach. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping this up. What can we look forward to between let's say now and February? <laughs> uh um, I'm just going three more projects. I don't want to get too deep into it, but yeah, three more projects. Uh and more videos, of course. Shout out to my man, uh, DeAndre Collins over there at Collective Films. Mm-hmm. That's my right hand in this video sh- stuff. Um, and I want to just build Castle Ill as a brand bigger so it becomes bigger than me. And when I first made it, I didn't really, really want this to be about me. I wanted it to be about uh, just dope dope stuff I see. Castle Ill means it's kind of like House of Style. It's yeah. Castle of Ill. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's my plan. So we just want to build that and then keep the, um, just keep the, keep the, everything dope, keep everything fresh. Um, I'm on some health and wellness tip too. So uh, we want to get a, uh, I'm a long distance runner. Mm-hmm. So we want to, I want to start a run club, uh, Castle Ill Win Parade, but it's been a little harder for me to put it together. So hopefully before the end of the year, we can get that going. And then other than that, man, um, we just going to stay pushing the needle, stay innovating, stay making some dope stuff, stay hip hopping yeah. in the tradition of our forefathers, man. Hell yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely looking forward mm-hmm. to all that. Uh, for this next one, go ahead and look straight at the camera. Tell everybody how they can find you. Yes, you can find me at, uh, first of all, first and foremost, castleill.com www.castleill all my projects there we got merch there all the videos all the hot stuff um photography section um pricey i'm on instagram underscore p-r-i-c-y i'm on twitter underscore p-r-i-c-y um oh i got a link tree so same thing underscore p-r-i-c-y and all my stuff is there youtube pricey uh just p-r-i-c-y all my videos are there hell yeah and then uh any other plugs any other shout outs anybody else you want to put on while you're on here um shout out to the whole 503 uh shout out to all my all my fans and friends and family worldwide um shout out to damie for looking out for me putting me on um putting me on to you guys that's a real one right there that's a real that's an ambassador oh yeah yeah shout out to amy one time he really like um once again we're talking about guys who cross their t's and dot their i's and got a lot of love for the Mm -hmm. art and uh come from that school of like if you notice when he rhymes he brings his he brings his lunch pail oh yeah um and he really like I think he one of them dudes. He might even love like the local scene. Like that might be his favorite genre. Period. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. So much like he got so much love. Don't got a hater bone in his body. Um, um, he really needs to be on the board of like directors for the you know I mean? for the scene. I think. You yeah. Know? I love that guy. Real, real one. He's a real one. Um, uh, shout out all the everybody I worked with, all the producers. Uh, and just you know, stay down with us, baby Castle Little man. We gonna keep. Making these hits, she did. Oh yeah! All right. And with that being said, we've got one last question to go. But before we do, I'm gonna steal the camera for just a second. All right. As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And one more shout out to the Brothers Apothecary, Ronald Records, and Portland Water. Thanks for keeping us hydrated. And with that being said, the final question. Mm-mm. And this is entirely up to your interpretation. But what is an album you feel is more on the obscure side? It's a deep cut. It's one not a lot of people would know, but it's one you think everybody should know. Uh, I'd say probably the whole Shabazz Palace's catalog, but uh, maybe that, uh, what's it, Donna Diamond Dreams? I like that one. Hell yeah. Jazz Palace is out of Seattle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you for that, Rec. And mm-hmm. that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. And this has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. I'm Pricey. And we're signing off later, y'all. That's a wrap. <laughs> this is not a bad Keep 
jamming.